Beedle beep, beedle beep. Welcome to the court of the EDI Jester. How are we, everyone? I do hope that you are well. Um, <clears throat> let's get through February and we're heading into spring then. I'm a happier man. Sort of hiding away like a hamster under a load of sawdust. That's what I'm doing, right? Because it's cold and bleak. <laughs> right? But let's not be cold and bleak about today. Um, South Carolina. Nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina. South Carolina bill aims to block child gender surgeries. ESG based investing. This comes from the Epoch Times. Just a little pointer here, right, for some of you. Occasionally you come across a website and you can't read it because it's like, you know, this is behind a paywall. Now, that's fine. People should be paid for their work. I agree. Okay, but you can't subscribe to them all. And it gets really frustrating, doesn't it? You're like, I've got this one, but I haven't got that one. I've got, so you can't see it. Now, there's a little thing at the top of your browser. If you look next to the name of the website, you will see a thing that looks like a little sort of page. Now, I wonder if I can show you. Do you see it there in yellow? Right? That's not, that's in yellow because I'm in reader mode. Now, if you click that and put it in reader mode, sometimes you can read stuff that's behind a paywall. Just a short gesture tip there for my viewers. South Carolina aims to block child gender surgeries. The Help Not Harm Bill, or H4624, bans gender transition procedures for children under 18. Good, right? <clears throat> A second bill, the Prescription for Minors Act, also known as S882, makes it illegal for a doctor to prescribe medicine to a minor without parental consent. Good, right? A third, the ESG Pension Protection Act, or H3690, makes the state pension fund invest in companies based on profitability, not environment, social and governance standards. That's interesting, isn't it? This is, in my mind, because you know what I've been reading, what I've come across, South Carolina is the first to put those two things together. Interesting, isn't it? Those bills are happening at the same time. Because the ESG goals are, are absolutely behind all this. <clears throat> Republicans hold veto-proof control of South Carolina's House and Senate. And the governor, Henry McMaster's, is also Republican. Under the Help Not Harm bill, the doctors who perform genital transgender surgeries on children will be guilty of inflicting great bodily injury upon a child. The bill reads. Right? This is great. Right? Direct legislation attacking these ghouls. The bill also bans cross-sex hormones and puberty-blocking drugs as a treatment in cases of gender transition. South Carolina's gone the full enchilada. That's a title in itself, isn't it? I might call that. I might call this South Carolina goes full enchilada. If that's the title. We'll have that title today, I think. <clears throat> All these medicines can still be used to treat children who have genetic issues causing trouble in normal biological development, i.e. there is a biological reason for them getting it and not a psychological belief system, okay? But public funds may not be used directly or indirectly for gender transition procedures, the bill states. Those who perform transgender procedures can be subject to lawsuits or loss of medical license. The bill reads... Sorry, the bill reads, right? Okay, that's what it says in the bill. Here's one. Public employees shall not knowingly withhold from a minor's parent or legal guardian information related to the minor's perception that his or her gender is inconsistent with his or her sex. The bill states. This is... Carolina goes full enchilada. <laughs> no Democrat co-sponsored the bill. What a surprise. What's wrong with them? The left, right? The story continues. The bill passed the House by an 82 to 23 vote, including two Democrats in support. Eight Republicans and 10 Democrats were either absent or abstained. The bill is now in the Senate Committee on Medical Affairs. Republican Mike Burns said to the Epoch Times, help not harm was an important thing. It was on the priority list of maybe half a dozen bills. It is relatively uncommon for a bill to receive so many sponsors, he said. The large number of Help Not Harm sponsors indicates a very high support for this bill. This is a taste of what's to come, isn't it? 
Most everybody in the family caucus have signed on to this bill, he said. The story, story again continues. The bill has been in the works for a few years. Mr Burns said he, had said he said South Carolina hasn't had many issues with child gender transition, but leg legislators want to be proactive on the issue. Five years ago, nobody was talking about kids changing their sex or trying to transition, Mr Burns said. However, library schools and other sources have exposed middle school aged children to these ideas. He said, as a result, the level of focus on transgender procedures for children has risen. Our Medical University of Southern California, located in Charleston, had a unit to perform puberty blockers and perform these surgeries, Mr. Burns said. We didn't know that. We didn't have a clue that it existed here. You see, when people say this has happened on the Tories watch in the UK. The stealth, this has been done by stealth. By stealth, right? So the idea that the Tories were cognizant of this, I don't think they were. And I don't think the current government was cognizant of it until about 18 months, two years ago, when Liz Truss first made her speech that everybody said she was bonkers about, when she talked about, you know, what's the, how, the background of this and what it's causing in terms of damage to our society. MUSC regulations state that transgender care is only available to adults, according to its website. But as recently as 2021, MUSC saw 102 transgender identifying children, according to research that has since been removed from the website, but is available. There's a link, people, on the Internet Archive. Oh, praise the Internet Archive. The study noted that the annual number of transgender identifying children seen in the paediatric endocrinology clinic at MUSC has increased from one patient to 102 within a decade. The average age of patients is 13.6 years. The study said that 20% of trans identifying children receive pubertal suppression. Right, so 20%, that's 25, right? And we know that 90% will be gay, same-sex attracted, or autistic, or looked after kids, that will be, if left alone, would have been fine. So they've, you know, if, if essentially they've screwed up 24 kids already. Fifty percent received homo hormone th affirming therapy, and 38 percent patients were not on endocrine medications. The Epoch Times contacted MUSC, but received no comment by publication time. How far are you going to go before you let them ruin your young kids' lives who aren't able to make those kinds of decisions, Mr Burns said. That's South Carolina. That's South Carolina, who, who are making a stand, who are taking a stand and saying, no, no more. Um, we'll do it a different way over here, because, you know, we'll just weed it out in various ways. That's what we seem to be doing. But we've still got their, the ability to obtain these puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones outside the country, right? It's FGM. It's G oh, sorry, not FGM. It's, gen it's genital mutilation at the end of this corridor, folks. What the, what are we doing? It needs to be out of schools. It needs to be out of everything. But South Carolina, they are taking a firm grip before, as said in the article. There's more to the article. Please do go and read it. Um, good on you, South Carolina. Let's keep going, shall we?